<laughs> All right. In the interest of time, um, I know there's some people on here that had um, other events as well. And if you notice from the screen, we also have a group of lovely students here. Um, and I promise them we're going to keep this quick. So welcome, everybody. Um, if you just give me one second, I'm going to share my screen so that you can see my presentation. Can everybody see that? <clears throat> Excellent. All right, great. So once again, good evening, everybody. Um, we right now have over 100 people here, so that's wonderful. Um, thank you all for coming this evening. This is our sixth grade, I don't want to call it an orientation because we're really just um, showcasing some of the great things going on at the middle school to make our fifth graders feel uh, more welcome and less nervous and anxious about coming here. Um, so welcome tonight. Uh, my name is John Carlo. I'm the principal at Grover Cleveland Middle School. Uh, I'm very happy to have all of you here. I see the numbers keep going up. We're at about 125 right now. So welcome everybody that was able to attend tonight. Um, I started out with this quote for tonight because I think um, it's really important, especially when you're talking about your journey to middle school. Uh, it says, all change is hard at first, messy in the middle, and so beautiful at the end. One of the great things about the middle school is when you come in as a end of the fifth year, beginning of sixth grade year, um, we really get to see some of the struggles that you have early on in the middle school. But by the time you graduate um, and you go on to the high school, um, we get to see how much you've grown and how much experience you have at that point. Uh, just real quick about the middle school. There we go. Uh, just to show you a quick example of what our schedule looks like, um, our day is typically from 8.35, which is homeroom, uh, to 2.50. Typically, you have five academic classes, a cycle class, uh, health and phys ed, and a lunch period, which we will talk about kind of as we go through this presentation today. Um, you'll get a better view of this when you get your schedule later on in the summer but this is just a rough idea of what a typical middle school schedule would look like. And obviously we will help you navigate through the whole process. And um, our sixth grade team is wonderful. That's why they're all here tonight to help you feel better about the transition to the middle school. Um, as I mentioned, these are, are some of the things that you will see in a sixth grade schedule. Uh, math, language arts, science, social studies, Spanish for all sixth graders, uh, health and phys ed, and our cycle classes, which we will talk about throughout the presentation. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, the lunch period. Uh, when we get later on in the summer, um, right before school begins in September, our sixth graders will have an in-person orientation where you will get a chance to actually tour our building. But this is just to give you a couple images, just so you don't go the whole summer wondering what does our middle school actually look like. Uh, on the left, you'll see our cafeteria. On the right, you'll see our gymnasium. On the left, you'll see our auditorium, which we're not sure if you'll actually get to see next year as uh, there's a project where our auditorium will be getting a complete remodel. So depending on the timeline, um, you may or may not get to see it in this condition or you'll see it as a brand new condition. On the right-hand side, you have our media center. And then this is just to give you a quick glance of what our sixth grade floor looks like as well as just a typical sixth grade classroom. Uh, throughout the evening, you're gonna hear from a large number of teachers um, and we're gonna kick it off with our social studies teachers, um, Ms. Otinsky and Mr. Teshkoyan, who are both here tonight. Hello, I can't see anything on my phone, Zoom, I apologize. Apologize. So I don't even know if my face is in the screen here. Mr. Tesh Coyne, I see you're coming to us from a bus, I think. I'm in my car. Yes. Um, Can you hear me? Three, one. U.S. history, starting with George Washington as president. We finish up with Reconstruction and then some bonus material after that. 
Um, we take a heavy look at primary and secondary sources in sixth grade social studies, and we think of our content as more of a vehicle for analysis and critical thinking than uh, just content for the sake of content. We support our language arts colleagues pretty heavily with a lot of nonfiction reading and lessons and skills and a lot of writing, argumentative writing, research writing, and um, I don't know what else do you want to add, Mr. Teshkoyan? Yeah, we do a fair amount of writing, critical thinking, uh, reactionary pieces. We use a lot of primary and secondary sources. Uh, the material is very interesting. The kids like it. We do a lot of PowerPoints. Uh, we do a lot of activities where the kids are really uh, um, emulating their cohorts in history. Uh, we have a lot of fun, so I don't want to lay any fears. Social studies is a good subject for kids. They usually do very well in our classes. And we're looking forward to seeing you guys and your kids in school in September. Yes, and throughout the evening tonight, different teachers have signed up to do some frequently asked questions and little tips and tricks for sixth grade. So the topic that Mr. Teshkoin and I are covering having to do with um, classes being grouped into a quad structure. So we've got four teachers, a math, a language arts, a social studies, and a science, and we sort of share the same group of kids. And then there's the other quad same four subjects. And so the kids are randomized into which class they're in. They don't travel around as a homeroom. The only thing they do as a homeroom is go to um, phys ed and their cycle classes together. Other than that, they are split up throughout the day within their quad. So that's the structure of the day. That's all we have to say, I believe. And the kids are really happy having uh, multiple teachers. That's one of their uh, things they talk about a lot having uh, multiple teachers, not just one or two teachers. So it's a good situation. We're looking forward to a good year and uh, glad to have you guys aboard. All right. Thank you, Social Studies Department. Um, let's see. There we go. Some of the activities that students have an opportunity to participate in while at GCMS. Uh, these are just some of the offerings, not everything. We have a student council. We have a large variety of clubs, including different writing clubs, different community service clubs, um, all kinds of things like that. Uh, we are fortunate this year that we were able to bring back some of our student dances, which we're looking to continue next year. Every Wednesday, we have an advisory period, and we're hoping to bring back our enrichment period next year. Um, we have a spring musical, and we have uh, different house events. So allow me to introduce our students that are here tonight to help introduce some of these things. Um, I'm gonna allow them to introduce themselves because there's quite a few of them. Hi, so me and Kate are here on behalf of the Student Council and then Charlotte and Maddie are also here with me to speak about the house mm -hmm. project at GCMS. So here's just some information about Student yeah. Council you might wanna know if your kids might wanna join it. Student Council is a student run club at GCMS. We plan all sorts of fun events such as fundraisers and even contests that engage the student body and bring our community together and some events we had this year were so we've sold halloween and valentine's day candy grams we've done thanksgiving trivia we've had a holiday movie afternoon a book it event for project unify valentine's day cards for healthcare heroes selling reusable water bottles for a charity a make a difference appreciation week a scavenger hunt, a bake sale, many spirit weeks, a bagel breakfast, and so much more. Kate is the vice president this year, and I'm the president, so we like to contribute our ideas, but it's not just us. It's really anybody who has an opinion and wants to share it can let us know, and then there's a vote, and we like to try to make it happen. So those are just some of the fun things that students have come up with that we ended up doing. And at Student Council, you can share your ideas on what you think would make our school better. And this is the club where your voices can be heard. Yeah. So like I said before about Project Unify, that is an organization run by the Special Olympics that GCMS has been working with to create inclusive activities for the entire student body, um, no matter their physical ability. You will also get the chance to meet other sixth graders, seventh graders, and eighth graders at GCMS and work with them through the Student Council. And one of our specialties is Spirit Weeks. And on the right, you can see some of the students who have participated. That's always fun. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the house project. So Maddie, Charlotte, and I are all eighth grade house leaders for the GCMS house project. 
And the house project is based on the Harry Potter book series where students are split into groups or houses depending on what homeroom they're put into. So the names of the houses are based off of the values of a GCMS student, like citizenship, responsibility, integrity, leadership, and more. On house days, students and their houses complete a compete in team building activities where they can compete for house points. At the end of the year, whatever house has the most points gets their flag hum up, hung up in the front of the school for everyone to see. Eighth graders like us are picked to lead our houses to victory, and every incoming eighth grader gets the opportunity to try out to be a house leader. This year, the house leaders have planned things for the school to do while staying COVID-19 safe. We have had a capture the flag chip tournament, summer to capture the flag, and numerous house days, a handball tournament, and a soon to be all day field day. And in the future, we are hoping to do a dodgeball game. There are also things for students to do who are not into sports, like poetry submission and chalk contests. We hope you learned about all the great things the house project and student council does, and we cannot wait to see the incoming sixth graders get involved. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much, guys. I'm going to give them two seconds just to go back to practice. So if you guys want to log off, uh, go right ahead. So next, we're going to turn it over to our language arts department. Um, take it away. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Miss McCarthy, even though my name, I think, is coming up as Lori Chomko right now. I'm not sure why, but I'm a sixth grade language arts teacher. I am Lori Chomko. I'm also a sixth grade language arts teacher. I'm Dana Spina. I am also a sixth grade language arts teacher. Okay, Hello, so I'm a little... Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> um, I'm Lauren Calibro and I'm also a language arts teacher. All right, so a little bit about our program. The goal of sixth grade language arts is to equip students with strategies and critical thinking skills that will help them be confident and independent readers and writers. So we do this a lot through text analysis, thinking beyond the text. And we also do this through exploration of high interest texts of various genres and readers choice in book clubs. For writing, we will use different, um, or I'm sorry, for writing students will write for different purposes while learning to express their thoughts in a well detailed and organized manner. So that comes with a lot of graphic organizers acronyms that they will hear in seventh and eighth grade to help them remember the structure of different texts that they will be writing about. And ways that incoming sixth graders can help prepare for our sixth grade classes is by reading and writing daily, um, reading any kind of genre they want over the summer, um, all different kinds of writing, whether it be through journaling, quick writes, independent reading or independent writing, um, anything to kind of keep them going because as always practice and repetition is key to success. And also a little reminder, please have an, uh, keep an eye out for our summer independent um, reading assignment. Um, it should be posted on our Google, not on our Google, on our GCMS webpage towards the end of the school year as well as all summer long. So just be on the lookout for that. And I'm going to talk about one of our sixth grade tips, um, which has to do with Google Classroom. So besides their planners where they write down all their assignments, Google Classroom is another thing that's going to be GCMS uh, students' best friend next year. Um, students will use both Google Classroom and their notebooks um, to take notes and produce written work. So as often as we can, teachers like to post copies of work, notes. We do fun YouTube tutorials featuring ourselves. Um, and we post all of these on Google Classroom whenever we can. So it's important to check Google Classroom daily for assignments um, and different resources. And that to-do list is going to be key to avoid turning um, things in late and keeping on top of assignments. Um, also, um, what's great about Google Classroom is that teachers can provide feedback and rubrics. Um, so it's it's good that they will see it both digitally and on paper. So, and finally, our biggest tip is that it's important for students to schedule before or after school help, or if they see that they need help with something. So before or after school extra help is always key um, in having a great year in middle school. And that's it for language arts.
All right. Thank you very much to the language arts department. That was very insightful. So thank you very much. Um, and as Ms. Chomko said, the summer assignment will be posted on the GCMS website probably sometime, um, probably right around the end of the school year, probably June, uh, end of June. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I should mention as we're going through this, you do have the option uh, to, to put in a question if you do have any. A lot of the questions that were submitted ahead of time, um, we did look through when we have answers prepared kind of throughout the presentation. So if you want to hold off towards the end or unless something really pops up and you're like, oh, you, you talked about it, but you didn't address it, just throw it in there. Um, one of the questions that did pop up was roughly how many students are in a quad and it's pretty split 50-50. So let's say there's 200 students in the incoming sixth grade, there'd be about 100 in each quad. Um, next up, we have our very talented music department. Um, we, we are fortunate tonight that we have Ms. Abramovich, who's the director of music, uh, but she's also the vice principal here at the middle school. Uh, and we also have some of our uh, music teachers here tonight. So I will turn it over to them. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Ms. Larson, do you want to speak first about the music department? And then I can talk a little bit about theater. Um, sure, sure. I'll be happy to kick it off. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dina Larson. Um, some of you might know me because I also happen to teach general music at Washington and Lincoln School. Um, so fifth grade parents know uh, that there are options available for kids to take instruments for the band, orchestra, and of course to sing in the chorus. In fifth grade, that is not an elective, it's a mandatory thing, but as you transition into the middle school, becoming a member of the band, orchestra, and chorus, they're all electives. Um, anybody that is interested, I think the fifth grade parents received a survey. I would just suggest that you do fill that out. That doesn't mean that it's set in stone. If somebody said that they did not want to be part of an ensemble, but they changed their mind and in December they decided they wanted to join, we're more than happy to work with you and get you in the ensemble. And that's the other way as well. If you signed up, I don't want you to think that it's set in stone. If you decide you really can't handle it or don't want to do it, you can also let us know that you're no longer interested in September, but it gives us a good idea. So please fill out that survey so that we have it. So I'm going to speak behalf on the chorus first. Um, typically we meet in the auditorium. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that because we're waiting to find out what the time frame is for the renovation, but there'll be some place for us to be able to work together and get ready for the concerts. Um, there is an actual band room that's dedicated for the band students and a room dedicated for the orchestra students as well in the middle school. Um, for the ensembles, they typically meet before school between 8 and 8.40. Um, right now, the sixth grade is meeting on Mondays and Wednesdays. Right now, they're meeting on alternate Fridays as well. That may change and they may meet during the day during the child's phys ed cycle time. We're not 100% sure how the scheduling is going to work but we will absolutely make that very clear to the students. Um, we understand that in the beginning, uh, the kids are a little confused and maybe don't know exactly where every room is or know exactly when they're supposed to be meeting. We're very understanding and we'll be communicating with the students, um, constantly reminding them where they need to go because uh, we know it can be overwhelming to start in a brand new school in September. I heard the language arts teachers talking about Google Classroom. That is absolutely the way the band director, the orchestra director, and myself will be communicating with the parents to let everybody know, uh, and with the students to let everybody know, giving reminders about when the rehearsals are and the times of them. For those that are in band or orchestra, in addition to the ensemble days meeting um, about three times a week, they'll also have lessons that are in the school day. And similar to the way it's worked in elementary, it's on a rotating schedule so that the student is not missing the same class. Um, one thing that I really, really like about the way Grover Cleveland Middle School handles things is if a student is in one ensemble and also wants to be in another ensemble, they're welcome to be in however many they'd like to be. So a student could be in band and chorus or band and orchestra or chorus and orchestra. And there are actually some that are in all three ensembles. And we work with those students and remind them of what the rotating schedule is so that they know where they're supposed to be for a given rehearsal. Um, Ms. Sambramovich, I think I covered everything. If I left anything out, you can jump in. And I know I was, Mr. Verano is here to talk about the band as well. I was just going to add that we were also um, excited that we were able to um, bring back our um, 
competing in music uh, festivals this year. So last Friday, we did spend the day at Dorney Park. Um, it was great. We had competition in the morning and spent the afternoon at the park. So that was something that was exciting and um, definitely something for our music students to look forward to. Mr. Verano, did we miss anything? Uh, yeah, I actually just wanted to briefly mention, in addition to the ensembles that are uh, curricular and graded, the band, orchestra, and chorus are, are extra, they're curricular ensembles and they are graded. Uh, so you, they are electives and they are graded. Uh, we just want to mention that as a member of the music department, you are responsible for participating in music ensembles and you are expected to be punctual on time for the rehearsals at 8 a.m. In the event that you are not punctual for the rehearsal, your grade will be impacted, okay? Students who receive an uh, instrumental lesson during the week, uh, you will be required to check the weekly lesson schedule, which rotates, so you will not miss the same class multiple weeks, weeks in a row, and you will be required to be punctual for that. If not, your grades can be impacted. Um, in addition, any work due to missing a class for a lesson, when you come down to us for a lesson, you are responsible for checking in with your teacher and making sure that you get the assignment, not the other way around. You are responsible to, for checking in with your classroom teacher. Um, and there's also the opportunity to join uh, extracurricular ensembles. For example, there is a sixth grade jazz band. I direct that, we meet once a week. Mr. Downey uh, has Congrio, which is an auditioned uh, string ensemble group. And of course there is the school musical, which I believe Mrs. Abramovich will talk about a little bit. That's I'm a great segue. Jump in. I'm just gonna jump in and, and just say a couple other things. Um, and you're right, the Congrio ensemble is fantastic and so are the jazz band ensembles. If your student plays an interest an instrument and is considering switching instruments, that's absolutely allowed as well. Um, that's not an issue. And I just wanted to talk about the performances. Typically each ensemble would be performing at a winter concert um, and a spring concert. Ms. Ambramovich mentioned the Dorney Park. Um, it's an adjudicated festival. It's not really a competition. It's not like we receive uh, first place or second place. We don't, we don't want it to be a competition, but we are um, listened to by very experienced judges that know what they're you know, talking about. And they give us a lot of constructive criticism and they give us a rating. And the kids are always very excited to kind of hear about that. And as mentioned, um, they spend the rest of the day in amusement park. Typically the sixth graders would be going to Great Adventure. I don't know if we're still doing that or not. And the seventh and eighth graders, Dorney Park, but whatever. It's a really great day for the kids. Um, they had a field day uh, last week going and it's something that they really uh, look forward to a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Larson. Thank you, Mr. Verano. Um, Mr. Downey could not be with us tonight. He's on paternity leave, which is exciting for his family. And I believe Mr. Burroughs had a rehearsal with his high school groups. So um, they are not with us tonight. But if you have any questions specific to either band or orchestra, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself at jabramovich at cwcboe.org or the teachers directly. And I'm just going to speak briefly, Mr. Bertolo. That's it. Um, get involved with theater at GCMS. I know that at the elementary level, there was a, a, a lot of kids interested in the um, opportunity to be in Matilda at the high school this year. So the nice thing about the middle school is we have our own production. Um, Due to the heat, we did change it so it is not this weekend, so we'll have to update uh, that information will be coming out over the next day or so, but get involved. These are just some of the shows we've done over the last couple years, and we are excited. We have a new theater teacher who will be starting on Monday and has a lot of new ideas that he'll be bringing to both GCMS and um, the high school um, next year, so get involved. And that's it for the music uh, and theater department. Mr. Bertolo, back to you. All right, so as I was mentioning before, um, all sixth graders will have cycle classes throughout the year. One of the questions that popped up is what is a cycle class? Um, so a cycle class, there's four marking periods at Grover Cleveland Middle School. Each marking period, you will have one of these four cycle classes. Uh, Mr. Verano is gonna speak about the first one. It's a music technology course. Okay, hello again, incoming sixth grade families. My name is Mr. Verano, uh, and I teach the Cycle Music Technology uh, course at the middle school. 
Um, in addition, uh, I was speaking a little bit about instrumental music. I also teach instrumental music lessons uh, and I direct the jazz ensemble. Uh, so I do a whole bunch of things and some of the bands and stuff like that. But my main gig here is uh, doing the cycle music technology class. The all cycle classes are required curricular classes that are graded for sixth graders. They are graded and they're a little bit of a, a different thing from their um, basic core classes. So in this class, most of what we do, we meet every single day during your assigned cycle period, either first period, the first class of your day, or eighth period, uh, typically based off of the schedule that Mr. Bertolo, it'll be either first period or eighth period. And what we like to do is we change it up a little bit um, and we do electronic music creation um, and production. So most of the music that you hear on the radio today or on Spotify or on Apple Music or wherever you stream your music is all created on computers um, and programmed. And you guys will be learning how that process works and what it's like to do that. And you'll be learning a little bit about music theory, which is basically how music works. It's a set of rules and techniques that are like, hey, this is why this sounds like this, or this sounds like this. And music history is basically just, hey, this is how music sounds or was a long time ago, how it sounded a long time ago, this or that. So I really like to have students creating. Some of the projects that we like to do, uh, you, you get a little bit of the theory and history up front. Then the first unit is you basically, you make a song using all the techniques. You're gonna be using this software called Soundtrap. It is an online digital audio workstation, which is basically just like um, the software that the professionals use. Um, it's provided by the school, it's cloud-based, it's fantastic, it's a lot of fun, the students really enjoy that. And then their final project of the marking period is they synthesize all the knowledge that they acquired throughout the earlier half of the marking period, and they write a musical jingle, which is basically an advertisement, a musical advertisement for a local Caldwell or West Caldwell business. Um, we do places like Benji's or Rock and Joe's, so places that they know, and uh, they write a jingle and they sing a jingle. It's actually kind of cool, and a lot of our sixth graders have done a fantastic job. Um, so that's a little overview of Cycle Music Tech. All right, our second cycle class that we're gonna be talking about is a course called Innovation and in Research. Uh, and I will turn it over to Ms. Willenborg to explain what you'll see in that course. Hello everyone, and to any um, of my future engineers that are watching as well. Uh, I am so excited that I get to be your innovation and research teacher in the upcoming year. So just like Mr. Verano said, our marking periods are broken up into different cycles. And so you'll have me for one of those cycles. Um, what I love is that I not only teach innovation and research, but you'll also see me in seventh and eighth grade for STEM. So I get to see you all three years, which I'm really excited about. So innovation and research is exactly what it sounds like. So to innovate means to create something. And so you're gonna be doing a lot of creating here. So it's a nine week cycle class. We meet Monday through Friday, uh, whether it's that first period or the last period of the day. Uh, but really what we're doing is introducing you to these STEM related challenges. And we use a lot of household materials. So start saving up. We need things like toilet paper rolls, paper towel rolls, uh, any sorts of cardboard, rubber bands. You'll see as the time goes on and when you get your syllabus in September that we do use a couple of things that we like to reuse and recycle things. So you can see some of the pictures on the screen of, of kids that are innovating. So we have a bridge design challenge where we test out your bridge. We add a whole bunch of weights to it and you can see there's one boy that's very nervous and he actually got first place. So he doesn't have to be nervous, but there's a lot of great things that we do here. Airplane launchers, fidget spinners. It's all about that idea that, uh, that we are engineers. We're, we're designing, we're creating. And it's also a great lesson to learn that mistakes are gonna happen and that's totally fine. That is how we learn. That is how we grow. And I am so looking forward to seeing what you're going to create when I see you in September. All right. Thank you. 
the third cycle class is an art class with Miss Morrissey. Um, unfortunately, she was able, unable to make it tonight, um, but she just wanted me to reiterate a couple points to you guys to explain that art is a very diverse and that we will try and explore many different kinds of art making materials like tempera paint, pencil, color pencil, crayon drawing, working with clay and collage. Um, there's just a lot of fun things that you guys get to do in our class. So within that nine week cycle, Miss um, Morrissey has a lot of great projects in store for you guys. And similar to uh, Mrs. Willenborg, you'll also have Miss Morrissey for all three years. So she, they all have the benefit that they get to see your growth from the day you walk in as a sixth grader all the way till uh, eighth grade. And finally, our last cycle class. Um, right now, that's all you're going to get uh, because we're in the process of developing a brand new cycle class. You guys are so fortunate that you're going to get to be the first class to experience this. Um, the only preview I can give you is we often hear from sixth graders that when you come into the middle school, there are some issues or concerns with um, picking up study skills because some of the work at the middle school is a little bit more challenging than, than the elementary level, um, organizational skills, things like that. So this course is going to be designed to help you in your smooth transition from the elementary level to uh, GCMS. So be on the lookout for more information on this brand new sixth grade cycle class. Next up, uh, I'm going to turn it over to our world language department. All sixth graders will have Spanish in the sixth grade. Um, so I turn it over to you guys. Hola, I'm Senora Arango, despite the name on my screen. <laughs> um, Mrs. Pina shared the link, but I am Senora Arango. Um, and the most exciting news of the night is that you get to have Espanol every day. I know you're so excited about that. Well, we're excited about it. So um, Espanol, yes, you have it every day. So now it's a lot like other classes. Um, you have homework and you'll have some quizzes and tests, but we play a lot of games. We review a lot. We talk a lot of Espanol. Once you learn something, we expect you to use it. So you might hear us say, no entiendo inglés, because we don't understand English. Once you learn something in Espanol, we want to hear it in the language. So the more you use it, the more naturally, naturally it'll come. And so we, we love to hear you speak. We like to, to do a lot of different activities. And of course, we do some cultural projects too, which Ms. Senora Ferrer will share with you in a few minutes. Um, there are three of us. Uh, you may have me or Senora Ferrer, Viera Ferrer or Senora Reyes, which couldn't join us tonight. Um, but she is the emoji all the way to the right <laughs> under España. So um, uh, I did want to share a few tips um, just across the board for sixth graders before I do uh, pass it on to Senora Vera Ferrer. Um, one thing that I want to remind you all of is that you will all receive planners. Um, every sixth grader, all students receive planners and it's meant to keep you organized and write your homework and reminders for yourselves. So that's something you want to bring every day to your classes in addition to your homework and your charged Chromebooks, because I know we forget to charge our Chromebooks, but it's really important because if you have to use it, you have to be ready to open up and get ready to go. We don't have a lot of outlets, so you can't always charge your computers in class. So it's really important to prepare yourself for that the night before. Um, also, no phones, um, no phones at lunchtime, no phones throughout the, throughout the day, unless there's an exception that a teacher is asking you to bring your phone to class for some sort of um, assignment. Those uh, phones do need to be turned off and left in lockers, so you won't be able to see your phone until the end of the day. Um, and I'm so excited to meet you guys and see you todos los días, every single day. And I'm going to pass you on to Senora Vera Ferrer. She'll talk to you a little bit about some of the fun cultural projects that we do also. Buenas tardes. Gracias por acompañarnos a todos los padres que hablan español especialmente. So thank you for being here and uh, hope you could hear me. And I am Senora Viera Ferrer, not Dana Spina, but it's okay. Um, we are very much looking forward to having you in class and interacting with you. Our goal as a department is to get you speaking another language whether it is your second language or your third, hopefully, or beyond, is awesome. 
uh, having the knowledge, the confidence to travel, to speak to people within our community in their own language, or even just to understand when people are speaking in Spanish around you, it's, it's wonderful. It will, it will enhance your ability, you know, it will enhance your life when you travel and will provide different opportunities as you uh, grow up and start looking for jobs and stuff like that. So we try to provide as many, uh, as much immersion into the language as we possibly can so that you learn from it. Listening, interacting is how you will grow and acquire Spanish or whatever language you, uh, you do in the future. Uh, we do have Italian in the middle school, but that is a seventh grade option. Um, so we incorporate many aspects of culture within our curriculum. Uh, it, it sparks excitement, energy, hopefully curiosity, and, and you know, uh, you wanting to learn more and investigate more on your own. Uh, we have a really fun uh, culture project in November. It's El Dia de los Muertos. And we do a lot of fun stuff with that. Kids love it. We love it. If you guys are having fun, we're having fun as well. Uh, participation in class is out, is really important. The more you participate, the more you will acquire the language, the more confidence you'll have. Uh, know that if you struggle at any point, we are all, Senora Reyes, Senora Arango, and myself, we are here to help you and we will support you in any way we can. We offer extra help after school, before school, and we will get you speaking in Espanol muy pronto. Así no hay problema, podemos hablar. All right. Well, have a great day, a great night. Thank you again for being here and see you in September. Hasta pronto. Bye bye. Senor right. Bertolo, so are you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, next up, we have our wonderful science department. Hi, everybody. My name is Caitlin Pacala. Um, we teach in science four different topics, and they roughly align to the marking periods. So they kind of start and end right around the same time. We teach um, Earth and space science. Our Earth and space science, we do a lot of talking about gravity and the size and scale of planets. And um, a lot of times we will start our year off this way, and it really gets the sixth graders um, excited about science. Um, we also teach... Um, it's right in front of me, <laughs> ecosystem interactions, which is environmental science. We talk about human uh, impact on the environment. We talk about organism interactions. We cover um, Earth's history. So we talk about the fossil record, how the fossil record aligns to Earth's 4.6 billion year old history. Um, and we talk a lot about weather as well um, during the marking periods, how weather happens. We talk about extreme weather and we talk about different patterns we see throughout the course of the year. Hi everyone, I'm Demetria Marks, I'm not Dana Spina. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about some of the activities that we do in science. Um, we always like to start off each unit introducing new vocabulary words for students to become familiar with different terms that we use throughout the lessons. Um, we do a lot of fun interactive websites and hands-on labs throughout the year as well. Um, some favorites include one we do with Play-Doh where we represent different sizes of our planets and we do also one with the rock cycle as well. Um, we'll use graham crackers and fruit roll-ups and frosting to represent tectonic plate movements. So that's always a fun lab that students love to work with food. Um, we will also do some writing in science as well based on our labs. You guys will hear a lot of ICERs, that word ICERs, um, which is finding a claim, evidence and reasoning, and um, we'll write paragraphs using the information from our labs. Um, and we'll also be drawing some diagrams, interpreting data with graphs, bar graphs, and line graphs. 
Um, and we'll be doing a lot of fun stuff. So we'll be doing group projects and presentations throughout the year. Um, so a lot of stuff to look forward to. Hi there, I'm Christine Forte. And uh, may I ask Mr. Bertolo if you'll go to the next slide? Ah, there we are, thank you. Um, so you can see that we focus on skills as well as knowledge. So we will address the skills with students in class while we are working on them. And we'll talk about cause and effect or any of the other skills that you see mentioned as we are going through it and focus on questions that are not just always based on memorization of the facts. You do get a digital report card every marking period and you get number grades for every class what are those number grades based on? Take a look at the bottom of the screen. We have a school-wide system. So any homework that you get for each class gets averaged to account for 10% of your number grade for the marking period in each class. A formative assessment is, for example, a classwork, smaller quizzes like vocab quizzes. For science, it's labs. In other classes, it would be other performance assessments that you do in class. Um, those grades all get averaged together and that will be given a weight of 40% for your marking period average. Summative grades are test scores, uh, big writing projects or big writing assignments and large projects that you do. Um, those summative assessments count for 50% of your grade. And that's not just science, but that's the system that we use in the middle school. When the next marking period rolls around, you start fresh. So you have a chance to always try and compare how were you doing to how are you doing to how do you want to be doing. Uh, we do try to coordinate so that we're not giving multiple quizzes and tests on the same day. We do sometimes have to reschedule at the last minute, and you might end up with a couple of quizzes or a quiz and a test on the same day. If that happens, and if it doesn't work with your study schedule, you are allowed to speak with the teachers, whichever teacher you want to approach, to say, can I take this the next day? Or can I take this one another time? And we'll work with you so that everything keeps moving and we don't try and let anybody get too bogged down with too much studying at any one time. We do give out study guides and study materials. Sometimes you have to fill it in on your own using the notes that we went through in class. And sometimes the information is just given to you as a reference material that you can study with. But we love science and we love sixth grade and we are very much looking forward to meeting all of you in September. Hope you have a great end of your fifth grade year and a happy and safe summer. All right, thank you very much. Um, so at some point during your sixth grade year, you're going to need to ask for help from somebody. Um, obviously, Ms. Abramovich and I are always around in the main office to assist if needed, but some other friendly faces that you'll probably want to know is our guidance department. Uh, Mrs. Nagalis, Mr. Kazmarek, and Ms. Santuli are bridge counselors. I turn it over to you guys. Hi, good evening. Welcome to GCMS. I'm Susan Nagalis, and if your last name begins with A through K, I will be working with your child for the next three years. I look forward to meeting you all. Hey, good evening, everyone. I'm Dave Kazmarek. Um, I work with, well, we work with all students, even though we sort of separate by the alphabet, but we kind of tend to see everyone, and I look forward to meeting everyone uh, in September. And I'm Debbie Santuli. I'm the bridge counselor at the middle school. And I also meet with all the students um, to provide some emotional or academic um, social support. Good 
Mr. Bertola, would you move the slide, please? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Just to give you a sense of things we do in the guidance department, because even though the elementary school has bridge counselors, we do a little bit beyond what your child may have experienced at the elementary level. One of the things we like to do and make it a priority is to provide academic, social, and emotional support to all of our students and their families. Um, another thing um, we try and connect um, when there's a higher level of support needed. We also have um, a network in the community and um, uh, elsewhere in Essex County that we can help you uh, hook up and with. Uh, we also work with the teachers as well as you know you as parents and even as students to kind of bridge if there's a if a child is struggling academically where we help the child to advocate for themselves as well as provide supports for parents um, as as the year goes on. We assist students with executive functioning skills, organizational study skills, time management, and <clears throat> as well. All three of us are making plans now to go at the visit your children at the elementary schools. So they'll be able to put a name to a face and our door is always open to not only the kids, but to you as parents. So please don't ever hesitate to reach out. And if we don't know the answer, we'll help you find it. Thank you. Yeah. And one more thing, I guess what all these screens mean is um, we're the information people. So everyone and everything sort of comes through guidance eventually. So we're here to help just support your students, um, you know, have a successful, successful sixth grade. And one more thing I wanted to add um, before we go on to the next slide is that uh, we do have an advisory period on Wednesdays. We try to do it every other Wednesday. And what advisory is about is, first of all, students are linked um, are scheduled with one teacher. They will have that same teacher for the three years they're in the building. And the advisory class or group, it consists about 12 students. So the same 12 students with the same teacher will be together for the three years in the building. And every year we have a new social emotional curriculum that we follow. Like for example, today we had an advisory day and um, the students all across the board from sixth to eighth grade, we talked about um, test anxiety and strategies to help reduce anxiety, especially when taking tests and quizzes. So this is something that changes from year to year, the curriculum um, and what we focus on, but the students and the teacher follow along the three years that the students are in the building, which gives them a person that they can really connect with as well as students they can connect with while they're at GC Mess. Thanks. All right. Uh, also a person who will be extremely helpful to you during your time at the middle school is our school nurse, Ms. Curzum. Hey guys, my name is Lila Curzum and I'm the nurse at GCMS. Um, my office is located on the, on the second floor right next to where the guidance office is and across from the main entrance or um, from where the, the main office is. So um, you'll be hearing from me before school starts and hopefully be able to fill out some forms and, and communicate with me. Um, through Genesis, you'll be filling out the health concerns forms and that, those are the things that I see. You've done this for elementary schools also. Um, but there's, if there's any changes in status over the summer, um, any medications, anything like that, you put it on there and uh, I'll be contacting you uh, for more information if needed. Um, and um, like the elementary schools, if you, any of your uh, students are going to be taking medications in school, there's special forms to be filled out. Everything is on uh, my webpage. Uh, if you have the slideshow, there's links to the slideshow that show the same thing. Um, and you can get the forms from there. Another thing that is important before school starts is to get your immunizations. Um, the Tdap and meningococcal immunizations um, are needed to start sixth grade. You should have already heard about that from the elementary school nurse. If there's any problems, uh, just reach out to me again. Uh, we like to have all of that information before school starts taking a screenshot of it, uh, take a picture of it, emailing it to me, that's the best way to get it in. And the sooner you get it in, the better. So you wouldn't be um, 
getting emails from me at, later on in August. Um, one of the things that you guys will be, um, your students will be getting from the nurse's office, um, besides comfort or, or if there's anything uh, up there, oh, my door is always open, but um, we're required to do screenings every year. And I like to start with the sixth grader, so at least I get to know your students initially. They'll know where the nurse's office is and, and hopefully they'll feel more comfortable if they, if they need to see me. And that's it. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next, we're gonna turn it over to our phys ed department. There we go. Hi guys, my name is Nick Esposito. I'm one of the phys ed and health teachers here at GCMS, along with Mr. Gaddick, Ms. McAuliffe, and Ms. Soldier. With the big change between elementary school and middle school is they have phys ed or health every single day. All right, so they have to be prepared to be active every day and be engaged in whatever we're doing in the curriculum. They have health one marking period out of four. The other three, they're in phys ed. I am one of the sixth grade health teachers. Mr. Gaddick is the other one. Ms. McAuliffe is seventh grade health and Ms. Children is eighth grade health. Our big focus in phys ed, especially in sixth grade, is sport education, sportsmanship, having a positive attitude, giving effort every day. We do a mixture of invasion games, net games, racket sports. So that's like football, soccer, rugby, basketball, handball, volleyball, really classic sports. And our goal is to promote lifelong physical education and have them be able to play that activity throughout their adulthood. We focus on sport education where students get chances to be officials and scorekeepers as well, give them different tasks so they learn every side of an activity. Um, with health, we focus on wellness. The overall general wellness, Ms. Dolgen goes more in depth in eighth grade focus on nutrition, digestive system, endocrine system, puberty, tobacco, cyberbullying, and conflict resolution. And that's every day. Some of the expectations we have in phys ed is that they have a positive attitude and they give effort. They don't need to be the best athlete. We don't care about that. We care about how they're treating each other, how they approach every class period. And right now we're not using the locker rooms. There is a chance we might use them next year. We're not sure yet. But for now, we ask that students wear sneakers, loose-fitting, comfortable clothing so they can move around. If they want to wear Crocs to school or boots, that's fine. Just to have them bring an extra pair of sneakers for their locker. That way they can change into it. Um, I think you can go to the next slide, Mr. Patola. So some of our expectations, like I just said, be open-minded and willing to participate. It might be a new sport or something you're not familiar with. Wear appropriate attire show good sportsmanship. We offer it a safe space mentality uh, from a mental perspective and an emotional perspective. We want to contribute positively to class and have fun. We understand that the kids sit behind the desk most of their day. So if we can be the time where they can kind of let loose a little bit, burn off some steam, socialize, we're more than happy to accommodate that. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to us directly. We'll be happy to talk about anything that goes on at Physical Health. Thank you. All right, thanks, Mr. Esposito. Uh, and finally, I'm gonna turn it over to our math department. Hi, I'm Mr. Saito. I'm one of the math teachers in sixth grade. Um, we, we learn a, a ton of things throughout the year, but we, we felt it might be appropriate to let you know what you need to review um, before sixth grade begins. So um, before September, um, you should be fluent with your multiplication facts. Uh, you should know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide with whole numbers, and as well as you can with fractions and decimals. Um, you should also review place value and rounding for whole numbers and decimals. This will just make everything smoother and uh, their math lives a lot easier throughout the year. Um, I'm also going to talk about Chromebooks, and I saw one of the questions. Um, the school is going to issue every student um, their own Chromebook um, to borrow for the year. Um, the teachers expect the kids to bring the Chromebooks to school every day and bring them to every class. And also just um, remember to charge them home overnight, just like they would with their phones, and just in case to also bring their charger to school as well. 
Hi, fifth graders and parents. I'm Mrs. Keenan. I also teach sixth grade math. I've been teaching sixth grade math with Mr. Saito for about 20 years. Um, I think Mr. Bertolo decided to save this slide for last because we always save the best for last. And the most exciting part of sixth, grader, sixth grade is lockers. So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about lockers. Um, students, uh, it would be in their best interest to attempt to open up a lock before they come to either orientation or sixth grade for the first time. It will save them um, a lot of stress as well as the teachers on the first day of school. If you see, I posted a little picture of the lock that you can purchase at CVS, Amazon, ShopRite, anywhere. It, it's not as easy as um, you would think. They are the old school lockers that we all used to open. Um, so if they can practice before they come, um, that would be very helpful. Um, locker times, we have specific locker times uh, before school or before homeroom, before and after lunch, at the end of the day, and all backpacks will be kept in lockers. And we are happy to be back in lockers this year since we didn't have them, since the students weren't able to use them last year. And just um, to give you a heads up, students may use locker shelves. There's magnets that you can buy tape to organize and decorate the inside of your locker. Um, anything used to decorate just must um, be able to be taken down. So we look forward to, to seeing you guys in September. We hope everybody has a good summer um, and feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any questions. Right. Uh, so just to follow up on a couple questions that have popped up throughout this presentation, just to reiterate a few points. Uh, number one, yes, there will be an in-person sixth grade orientation for all sixth grade students only. Uh, unfortunately, parents are not invited to this. This is only for students. It's on Wednesday, September 7th at 1 p.m. School next year begins on Thursday, September 8th. So this is the first, this is the, the last day of summer. It's the day right before school begins. Um, this will give an opportunity for students to kind of see each other, to meet teachers face to face, to walk around the school a little bit, uh, to get a tour, to see all that stuff. Um, so all those things will be coming um, on September 7th. Also on the first day of school, typically we have an extended homeroom. So that way, again, students have an opportunity to meet their homeroom teacher to go to their locker, to try it out. Um, lockers are definitely one of the things that sixth graders are most concerned about. So definitely practice, as Ms. Keenan said. Um, it may take a little while for you to get the hang of it, but once you get the hang of it, it's like you always use the locker. It, it's real easy to get a hang of once you get to that point. A um, couple questions that popped up. Um, Lunchtime typically for the sixth grade is between 11.08 and 11.38 a.m. Um, lunch is separated by grade, so it will only be sixth graders in the lunch period. It's not mixed with seventh or eighth grade. It's only sixth graders. Um, depending on the season and depending on the weather, there are opportunities for students to go outside. This year, because of COVID, we've allowed students to eat outside in the fall and in the spring. Um, we may continue that next year. I'm not exactly sure yet, but there are opportunities for students to go outside um, and have that route. Um, yes, a copy of the slideshow will be sent to everybody. Yes, this is being recorded. Everybody will get a copy of the link if you need to go back and review it. Or if you have someone who was unable to attend tonight, they will also get the link. And yes, we will be sending out a frequently asked question sheet for any of the questions that we may not have been able to answer here tonight. Um, I believe that is it. There are a couple other questions popping up. So just real quick, yes, there is a GAP program for, for middle schoolers. For sixth grade, they're grandfathered into it from fifth grade. Um, there are no honors classes at the sixth grade level other than the GAP program. Um, once they hit seventh grade, that is where you'll have an opportunity to take a more advanced math class. Um, or it was mentioned before, you can switch from Spanish to Italian. Um, and then in eighth grade, there's opportunities to go to an advanced Spanish class or an advanced math class as well. Um, I mentioned the recess question. 
Uh, situation with phones in school. So phones are not allowed. They should be kept in lockers at all times. Um, I believe someone had mentioned that previously, but backpacks, cell phones, hats, all that stuff should all be kept in your locker throughout the day. Um, so finally, just to kind of wrap this up, I promised my sixth grade teachers we will keep it to one hour. And right now it's seven o'clock in a few seconds. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, our motto here at Grover Cleveland Middle School is make a difference. So fifth graders, as you spend your summer getting ready to come to the middle school next year, I really want you to begin thinking about how you're gonna come here and make an impact. How are you gonna make a difference for others in our community? Whether it's just acting appropriately, whether it's joining a club, whether it's being involved in music or the musical, sharing your talents, whatever they might be, just come to the middle school prepared with opportunities and ways to make a difference to everyone. Um, as I said, you'll be getting an email with all this information at any point. If you have any follow-up questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me, jbertolo at cwcboe.org. It's on the website. Uh, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. All the great information comes out that way. Other than that, fifth grade, class of 2025, I am so looking forward to seeing you in September. Enjoy your summers. Don't think about the middle school too much. We want you to enjoy your summer and we will see you all on September the 7th. To my sixth grade team, thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, everybody have a great evening and go make a difference.